Welcome to the Go Local Podcast, the unofficial podcast about local guides, lovingly made by local guides for local guides, as well as all you lovely listeners out there who have stumbled upon this podcast. Today's episode is very specific, brief, and focused entirely on the Connect Life application process. Essentially, what you have been asked to do by Google, plus some strategy from myself in tackling them, and also some really awesome tips from the Go Local team. Everything you need to know and do is all right here in episode 7. Go local with us, go local with the picture, your unofficial cast to all things local guys. Yeah! And welcome back. My name is Adrian. I am your host for this episode. I am a level 8 Malaysian local guy currently based in Manchester, UK. I have been very, very fortunate to have been selected for the Local Guides Annual Summit since 2016. And there is actually a small group of three Peters, as Paul Pavlinovich have affectionately called us, two of whom are also in the Go Local team, and they are Kimberly Ann Graham and Shirley. The rest of the team, Patty, Vandana, and Linia, are first timers from Connect Live 2018. And between us all, we hope to offer you some guidance in applying for this year's Connect Live. But first, let's get some disclaimers out of the way. Firstly, as an unofficial podcast, we have no direct connection to Google and the Local Guides team, and so no inside knowledge of the selection process, no special treatment or attention, and everything mentioned here are our personal opinion and rationale about the application process. We aim to provide useful advice and information, but you should always tailor it to your own preference and personality. We can choose what you can work with. And lastly, the vast majority of the episode is based on my experience and is my personal strategy. And knowing me, there's a high chance I'll get something wrong, so just fair warning there. There are no announcements for this episode. I did say I was going to keep it brief and really simple. So all you should be aware of is that the closing date for the application is the 30th of April, which is less than 30 days away. And you really, really need to start planning for your application if you haven't done so already. Okay, so let's get going. I will assume that you are a local guy. If you are not, please check out the show notes. And by the way, I will be including all useful links there. And also, I assume you have heard about the Connect Live event. It is only the biggest event in the Local Guides program, where this year, 200 local guides will be selected from all over the world to attend a four-day summit in San Jose, California. Right from the start, you will be in for an experience of a lifetime where you will meet so many awe-inspiring local guides and get the chance to chat to the Googlers who have been running the program and also those working behind the scenes to make Google Maps the most awesome app ever. So my personal opinion on the Connect Life event is that it serves two purposes. Number one, Google wants to treat their top local guides who have been passionately and consistently generating useful content for Maps by flying them over for the summit to show them the importance of their work to the Google ecosystem and also to inspire and encourage them to be even better than before. At the numerous sessions at Connect Live, attendees will get a progress report of sorts on the program, how the data provider have been used to provide tips and enable discussions on best practices such as how to take good photos or videos, or even highlighting useful features on maps that would aid local guides in exploring and cataloging their environment. And number two, Google wants to pick your brains to understand how you are using maps to learn what features need to be introduced, improved or removed, and what better way to do this than by having a global audience of attendees from all walks of life. So here's the important bit. It makes a lot of sense for Google to pick attendees from different backgrounds and cultures. So in the past three years, we've had attendees young and old, in employment, still studying, not working, professionals, non-professionals, religious, non-religious, level five, all the way to level 10. So basically everyone right across the spectrum. Basically, do not feel that you are at a disadvantage because you're just a level five. Or if you don't organize meetups every weekend and you know, stuff like that. The really active and passionate local guides, what I call the superstars, make up the minority of the group. Right, so what exactly do you need to do to complete this application? First thing, you really need to visit the official Connect Live application page and basically read every single thing that's on that page 
because it highlights everything that you need to do, plus provide links to further content that goes through in greater detail. For example, how to create good video, list, and connect posts. Folks have already been submitting their application, and I've seen a few of the connect posts and even the one minute videos. And my first thoughts were that, wow, you guys are really, really quick. I mean, if you know what you're doing, that's great, but I would advise folks to really think and strategize how you should answer the questions asked and not really rush into it. You don't get more points by submitting first or so quickly. Instead, you should wait and see what other people are doing, how they are answering the questions, and perhaps pick out the good bits that you think can apply to your own application. So the good news is that we're going to help you improve your application and make it the best that it can be. We want you to present yourself in the best possible light, showcase your amazing personality, your passions, your achievements, and have sufficient information in all the right places in your application without repeating yourself. Right, I am not going to go through every single thing that's mentioned on the Connect Live application page, but I am going to pick a few items that I want to focus on in this episode. Number one, you need to be at least level five by the time the application closes. Okay, so this is a simple one, and you really just need to make sure that you are at least level five or going to be at level five by the time the application closes. Getting to level five is fairly simple, and in my opinion, you can do so in, I don't know, I would say a week. However, if you are not yet at level five, my honest advice is for you to focus on next year's application. I'm terribly sorry to sound like a wet blanket, but there's a big reason for that. And that leads me to the next requirement. Number two, you need to have provided consistently high quality contributions in the past 12 months. So if you have been contributing in the past 12 months, you would definitely already be at level five, if not higher. And don't forget that this is about high quality contributions, not short one sentence reviews or dodgy photos, but content that provide value to Google Map. Number three, you need to demonstrate that you are an active local guide, whether it's on Connect or organizing meetups in real life. Again, this is fairly straightforward. Create useful content on Connect, contribute to discussions, help newcomers to the site, welcome them, guide them in on how to use it, how to write good posts, stuff like that. What I'm seeing is this past few weeks, there is a spike in activity on the Connect forum. As great as that is, you really should be active all the time and not just during the application period. Google will know how active you are, so you cannot hide that fact. And for me, the most important thing really is your motive. Are you genuinely passionate about the program or are you just doing this just to get a free trip to Google Plex? If you are passionate about the program, it will show through your actions because you're not doing this for the points or the trip to Connect Life. You're doing this because you really do like exploring your neighborhood, your city, your country, or maybe you get a buzz from helping local businesses improve with your reviews and even guide others to explore the hidden gems that you found. Okay, so I'm not a very active local guide. I got to level eight in July. 2017, okay, and that's a while ago, and I'm still miles away from hitting level 9. As nice as it would be to finally get to level 9, I'm not motivated by the points or the levels. I do what I do because I really do like eating. I know it sounds really weird, but I do, and I enjoy exploring and finding out new places and trying out new dishes. I absolutely love photography, and I like taking pictures of my meals, of the places that I visit when I travel, and it just so happens that I can channel my interest in food, travel, and photography into the Local Guides program. I am also actively involved in the Manchester community, and have always wanted to create and grow a regular circle of friends to come and join me in exploring the city and the surrounding areas. Here in Manchester, we try and get together once a month, mainly because we are all super busy in our own lives, so it's quite hard to be more frequent than that. And then there's this podcast project that I'm involved in. Both the community and the podcast takes up considerable amount of time, and it's not easy. But my goal isn't about the points, because, well, there are no points to collect here. I do this because I want to improve myself. I want to improve my organizational skills, my people skills, and also my public speaking skills. These are all important skills to have in life, and I wanted to nurture them. 
So for those who struggle to be active in the program, find your passion, your goals, and shape them so that they align to the goals of the local guides program as well. It's like you're killing two birds with one stone. And as I said before, you can't just do this during the application period. It's a long-term investment. Number four, you need to create a Google Maps list, a connect post, a one minute long video, and then answer some questions in the application form. Okay, so now this is where it gets really, really interesting, and you need to have a little bit of strategy in tackling them. Let's start off with the application form that you can access from the Connect Live application page. In this form, you get some general questions such as your name, age, location, you know, the, the usual stuff. And most of the questions are fairly straightforward. There are three sections where we ask you to provide the links to your Google Maps list, to your Connect post, and also to your video. What this means is that you need to obviously complete the list, connect, post, and video first before you tackle the application form. But there are also two further questions asking about your involvement in the program, why you want to attend Connect Live 2019, and what you hope to learn if chosen. So the way I see it, this is a strategy. You basically have three sections, the connect post and the two questions, where you kind of have the freedom to talk about yourself in greater detail, but in so many words. Obviously, you do not want to write excessively and end up with this crazy long essay about you. Keep it short, keep it simple, but really take this opportunity to highlight what makes you special and why Google should pick you. And yes, I'm not forgetting about the prompts given for the Connect post. Pick a prompt that suits you, where you can use it as part of your story and then add more to it. Fatten it up with more bite-sized information about you. Use the Google Maps list, if you can, to showcase your passion. So if you're into food, then do a list of the top 10 eateries in your city. If you're into photography, you could do um, a list of top beautiful places to take selfies. There are just so many different ways to use the list as an extension of your interest or passion. Finally, the video. In that space of one minute, you want your personality to be the center of attention. This is the bit where you can stand out from the crowd. Get excited, jump for joy, whoop whoop, and show Google just how pumped up you are about the program. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, well, essentially the strategy of how you can present your story cohesively across the various sections. Just as a side note, there are bits of information that Google would probably already be aware of, such as how many reviews you've done, how many photos you've uploaded, the total view counts, etc. What they don't know is stuff like what makes you tick, what drives you to come back day after day to write reviews, what gets you excited about the program, and what you can do to improve the program for everyone in the community. That's the kind of stuff you should be focusing on. So what now? Well, I have a little treat for you all. I spoke to the Go Local team and they all agreed to share some of their own tips to help you along the way. It feels like fate, but by pure coincidence, each member of the team has a very unique strength that ties in very neatly to the application process. Kimi is a very strong character. She knows who she is and she is like a brand. She stands out from the crowd and everyone knows her. Shirley is a Connect moderator. She's seen the best and the worst of Connect posts and can certainly give you pointers on writing well. Linia is pretty experienced at list making. She's got some kick ass lists out there which you should all follow. And Patty, as you all should know by now, is our songstress extraordinaire. She sings, she's got stage experience, and she's got amazing tits, which I cannot wait to share with you all. Bandana is our Bollywood superstar, and you gotta catch her super duper video on YouTube on International Women's Day. And obviously, with her video shoot experience, she's got lots to share. So without further ado, let's hear what the Go Local team has to say. Hey Adrian. Thanks for inviting me on your episode. How exactly should someone who's interested in applying to Connect Live show off their personal style? What makes you special? We all are, and some of us show it in our clothing style or our hair. Some are more quiet about it, but it shows in our writing. Whatever it is about you that you think makes you stand out from the crowd, you should make sure that it shows in your video or your post on Connect. It's a very difficult thing to define. I still haven't figured out what it is that makes me stand out from the crowd. Maybe it's my hair. 
So when you're making your video, what kind of energy level to go with? Should you go for a quiet or demure, excited, happy, bubbly? My answer is go for the energy level that reflects you on a very good day. They know that you're excited for this event. It's fine to show it. If you're someone who's more on the quiet side, that's fine. There's room for all kinds of personalities that connect live. So the last thing is what to wear. It's something that you should be conscious of, but not overly concerned with. I usually like to make sure that my hair is a little more done than usual, maybe a little makeup. I usually wear sunglasses, so that's not a big deal. If you're filming indoors though, that might be strange. Don't go for the sunglasses unless that's how you always roll. If you have any local guides t-shirts, those are always a very popular choice. I personally find it very enjoyable when local guides from other countries dress in their cultural dress for their videos. But it's all about personal choices. Just keep in mind, you have this one chance to make an impression that might lead to the trip of a lifetime. Put all the effort in. Thanks, Kimi. I couldn't agree more. You definitely should put as much effort as you can. All the research, preparation, and careful planning will pay off and it will show in the quality of your answers, your list, and your video. So don't be afraid to be you. Hey everyone, it's Shirley here. It has been a little while, but I'm back to share some of my tips on how to share a good post on Connect for your Connect Live 2019 application. I hope by now you've all had a chance to take a look at the website for the details. For this year, be sure to post something new on the Global Forum, which can be found at www.localguidesconnect.com and use the local stories as a topic. Try to tell us a story and what it is that you love to share the most on Google Maps. And this can be anything. Paint a story with your words on your post by sharing some photos about your passion. For example, if you absolutely love desserts, then share with us how you find the absolute best dessert in your city and add a few photos as you describe your journey. I know we have a lot of local guides who are passionate about sharing accessible information on Google Maps. Tell us exactly what inspired you to do this and how you go about doing this. For example, what is it that you look for in a business and share some photos in the process? It doesn't have to be a very long post, but try to captivate the readers with your passion and excitement, whatever it may be. And don't forget to use a catchy title. Like if you think the restaurant near your place is the absolute best, then use a title like World's Best Sushi Restaurant. I hope this helps. I know I definitely look forward to reading your posts on Connect. Feel free to tag me if you want me to check out your post. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Shirley. I'm actually passionate about good quality content on Connect. And I have to say that there are some really amazing stuff in Connect but there are also tons of posts that could and should be better. The local guys team have put together a really great how-to post, and I really wish that as part of an induction for all new members, it is a required reading material. Don't forget, this is a story about you and it should have a beginning, a middle bit, and an ending. So start off with a quick little intro about yourself and add a beautiful photo where you're smiling hugely. Get the audience to know you first before you move on to answering one of the prompts. It gives a nice context about how your background is related to the answer. And as I've said earlier, you absolutely want to use this opportunity to explain who you are and what drives you. Again, a picture is worth a thousand words. Cliché, but so true. So you should really include a photo or two that's related to your answer. You know, for example, if you're... Let me see, if you're interested in animal welfare, share the adventures you've had pursuing this passion. Explain why you've motivated by this, why it is important to you, stuff like that. And finally, end your post with a quick little summary. If your Google Maps list is related to your post, feel free to reference it or even add the link to your video. And speaking about lists, Hi everybody, this is Linnea and I've got the pleasure to talk to you about making lists in Google Maps. Let me just say that I'm no expert, I'm just a willing and happy contributor and for some reason Adrian thought that I've done some crazy lists in the past, but let me get back to that. As you all may know, making a list is a part of this year's Connect Live application and Googler Anna Roth has made a post on Connect where you can read more about what they are looking for in a list. 
but I'm here to give you my personal advice for making great lists and what way to do so if not listing my tips. Number one, make sure you have an idea of what you want to list. There's a whole lot of places out there and it's hard to list all of them. Decide what kinds of places you think will make a good list. I'm sure others will find it good too. Number two, name your list with a catchy and descriptive name. Why a title should be descriptive is self-explanatory and why it should be catchy is because it attracts people and makes it easier to remember it. Number three, write a description that explains your intention and what the list contains. If you really love something or are passionate about helping people out, let them know and explain what the list contains so they know what to expect. Don't forget that you can use hashtags in your description. Number four, write descriptions on each and every place you've chosen. Why is this particular place in your list? And here you also have the possibility to mention things that people may be looking for. Are dogs allowed? Do they have outdoor dining? Etc. And don't forget you can use hashtags here too. Number five, choose a specific picture for your place. You can choose between the pictures that are uploaded to the place and this way you can make your list look fabulous. Maybe you want all of your pictures to be of nice colorful dishes or maybe you want to present the vibe of a place. It's up to you. Number six, last but not least, change the privacy settings to public. This is a must if you want others to see your list and even more important if you want to use it in your application. These six things are good to keep in mind when making a list. If you want more specific tips and the criteria for your Connect Live application list, go on to Connect and look for the post Four Tips for Creating Better Lists by Anna Roth. Also, good to know is that making lists look different whether you use your web browser or the Google Maps app. I prefer to start making my list on my computer using the web browser. Here I add the places I want in my list. But when I'm done with adding places, I go over to the app in my phone and I start editing the list, since some of the edit options aren't available in the web browser but only in the app. So, when you want to write your description, write the place descriptions, or choose the pictures to the places, I would recommend you to do that in the app. And to explain what Adrian meant by crazy list, I need to tell you about the first list I made in Google Maps. I decided I wanted to list all the restaurants in Stockholm that serves vegan food. Little did I know that there was over 300 restaurants that serves vegan food, and they're still counting. What I noticed, though, was that the Google Maps servers couldn't take it. I became aware of that when I edited and made descriptions to all 300 places, and when I checked the list the next day, none of my edits were saved. You could think this would make me crazy. And it did, but I didn't give up. I waited for a few months, believing and hoping that the development team would work their magic. And by now, I have no problems updating my huge list of vegan restaurants. Hooray! Since then, I've made other types of lists, for example, free entrance museums, dog parks, best fika places, and so on. These ones aren't even close to 300 places, but I still think they're very useful. And again, check out the posts on Connect where you can find the information you need for your Connect Live application. I wish you all my best luck. See, I told you, she has a kick-ass list. Thanks, Linia, for your list of tips. I'm not an expert at list making, so I've learned a lot from you on how to make a super duper one. I've actually made a few in the past, but they were all private lists that I was creating to help me in my travels. So it wasn't curated and it was just really, really simple. So for this application, I will be generating, I think, two lists. Okay, I can't quite decide what I want to do and which list to submit. So I'm going to put the link to one list in the application form and include the link to the second list in my connect post. Okay, so there's nothing in the rules that says that's not allowed. And I'm sure Google will be happy with more lists generated. And my first list, well, let's say it's, um, it's very, very quirky. So I'm not even sure if it's appropriate. So I'm putting in a backup list just in case. And advice that I want to add as well is really think carefully about your list. 
It will be public so anybody on Maps can see it. So please, please, please ensure that it actually is useful. I'm targeting my list at visitors to Manchester, so I really want to make sure that they can benefit from it. And yes, the quirky one is also very beneficial. Trust me, one day when I, when I let you guys know what a quirky list is, you understand why I'm kind of hesitant and why it's also actually very useful for visitors. And moving on to the video, let's hear what Patty and Vandana has to say. Hey everyone, so I'm gonna try to give you some tips on how to do a good video in terms of how you look and sound in front of a camera. A very important part of it is preparation, so your script. Ideally, you have something written down, your main points about what you want to say in your video, and then after that, if you can, commit it to memory. The reason for this is because it gives you more freedom in front of a camera to speak at the camera instead of to be looking like you're reading off a piece of paper. You're also going to want to plan where you're recording so that sudden surprises don't happen in terms of weird sounds and odd echoes and things like that. The second part would be pre-recording, so warm up. And when I say warm up, I don't just mean your voice. I mean pretty much everything, so your whole body, even if you're going to be recording from your shoulders up. The reason for this is because tension in your shoulders and neck can be tied to the rest of your body um, and it affects your posture, which will then also affect your speaking voice and how you sound. It could affect the amount of energy that you have in your voice and it can also even affect how you look in front of the camera and whether you look alive. So I like to break it down to about two to three minutes of stretching your neck and shoulders. I've included a YouTube link below and this lady, I think she does sufficient uh, neck and shoulder stretching. And then I like to end off with a standing slow reach down to touch my toes and then slowly coming back up again. So that kind of loosens up um, the rest of my muscles. And then after this body warm up, I usually do about two minutes of voice and face focus warm ups. So face stretches um, and massages. So first I like to open my face up really big and make it make my eyebrows go up and look extremely surprised and then come back in like I've just bitten into a lemon, something really sour and squish my face together again. Also, massages to your jaw area can loosen tension. And then after this, I usually do lip trills. So putting my lips together and blowing air through it. So kind of like... And then followed by some tongue twisters to help with diction and pronunciation of words. Then after that, you move on to the recording itself, and then it's actually the easy part. <laughs> All you need to do, what I suggest, is to imagine that instead of speaking to a faceless panel, imagine that there are people sitting behind your camera and that you're trying to connect to them and tell them a story. And it's totally okay to do multiple takes. Hi, local guides and non-local guides of any. This is Vandana, a level 8 local guide from Bangalore and I'm going to be sharing a few tips on how to shoot your Connect Live video. If you've never appeared in front of a video and this is your first time, it can be pretty nerve-wracking. Trust me, I know that feeling. It can be absolutely scary, but don't worry, you've got this. So how do you begin your video shoot? The most important part is the content of the video. The Googlers from the Local Guides team have made it easy by giving us three prompts and we can use any of these three to make the video. We can talk about our favorite place and what makes it special. Or we can talk about one thing we want everyone to know about our community. Or why are we proud to be a local guide? Now coming to the shooting part. Whichever device you're using to shoot, DSLR camera or your own mobile phone, shoot in the landscape mode. No one likes a shaky video, they're really an eyesore. So you have to keep your device stable and this can be achieved using a tripod if you have one or keeping your phone on a table with some objects behind as a backrest. If you're asking someone else to shoot, make sure they hold the camera steady as much as possible. When it comes to choosing the location of your shoot, ensure there's enough light and natural light is the best. Make sure there is no shadow on your face or the light source is not behind you or there is so much light that your face ends up glaring. You can test out a few clips to get the best setting and then begin your final recording. If you're shooting outdoor, one major challenge can be the external noise, be it in the form of vehicles, people talking, ambient sounds and so on. To avoid this or to keep it to a bare minimum, you can do an early morning shoot as it would be generally quiet. 
Remember that we have to keep the length of our video to just a minute or under. If you're having trouble getting the flow of your words, just jot down the important points you want to speak and you can build upon it later. And don't worry if you cannot get everything right at the first take. I remember in my last year's application, I took about 30 to 40 retakes. So it's perfectly fine if you want to record once again. Another important thing to keep in mind is that our videos don't have to be fancy and perfect. We don't have to stress about video editing either. The team is more interested to know about us, our interests and our contributions to Google Maps. Molly Mocker, a video producer at Google, has shared some great advice for creating a Connect Live video and these tips are available on the Connect Forum. Brittany had shared this on the Connect Forum some time back. So if you haven't already read it, I urge you all to please read it. It has some great and amazing tips, very simple and easy to follow. You can find the link to this in the description of our podcast. And here's my last point and probably the most important one. Don't wait until the last date, guys. Time flies and before you know it, it's the last day of submission and you'll end up panicking. So submit those applications now. Good luck to all the local guides and fingers crossed for all of us. Cheers. And this is Vandana signing off. And now you know what that sound clip is that I've been playing in between the various segments of this episode. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> well, what can I add to this? Well, I'm a keen photographer, so I'm a very much biased towards visuals. So when I did my videos for previous summits, I always try to pick an exciting location. I try to showcase Manchester because it's an awesome city, but chances are the weather is grey and overcast. So I try to pick places that are visually stimulating. It could be beautiful buildings or bright colours or stunning vistas. And I would highly encourage folks to do their shoot outside their rooms or houses, unless you have something amazing to show. For example, your house may be very cultural or architectural, but you know what chances are? and I've seen a few of them before, your backdrop is going to be a very boring plain wall. All I can say is try your best to avoid that. Your message in your video is not only what you say and how you say it, but also what you can show to people. So make full use of that 60 seconds. So, okay, you got all that? Easy, isn't it? I know, I know. It's it's easier said than done, and coming up with your story can be quite challenging. You may feel that you don't have anything exciting to say, that you're a quiet person, maybe a touch boring, that you've not had much opportunities to travel. But you know what? Sometimes the simple stories are the most captivating. You don't need the gimmicks, the special effects and all that. Just be yourself, be the very best of who you are, and your inner beauty will shine through. And I absolutely believe in that. <laughs> I know it sounds really cheesy, but I'm, I'm actually a very cheesy person. Okay, so um, that's it, ladies and gents. I don't really know what else to add to it. Um, it, it feels not enough, but at the same time, I think it's, it's more than enough for you guys to chew on. So hopefully you have a lot to think about. And I hope that you found this episode to be interesting, if not helpful. Just to reiterate again, these are just our own opinions, tips and advice. Some may work, some may not work for you, and we hope that they are helpful in any case. And if you have your tips that we've not mentioned, feel free to let us know. You can email us at golocopodcast at gmail.com. You can leave us a voicemail through the email or through the Anchor app or find us on Connect. I will be posting on there to promote this episode, so leave us your comments there as well. And we would definitely love to continue on the discussion there. Also, in a general way, if you have any ideas for future episodes, do get in touch. Some of us are interested to do a photography-related episode, maybe even touch on 360 photography. As for episode 8, which is coming up in about two weeks' time, I believe it's going to be a really packed episode because we will be having four local guides talking about the upcoming Earth Day. Linia and Kimi will be co-hosting, and they will be interviewing two other local guides. Can you guess who they will be? Hmm... Who amongst us local guys have been very active in the environment issue? Hmm, hmm. Well, you have to wait just a little bit longer to find out whether your guess is right. As always, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe and share this podcast to all your social networks. It would make me absolutely happy. My name is Adrian. 
Thank you for listening in. Keep smiling. All the best to your application. And until next time, from all of us here at the Go Local Podcast, let's guide. Go local with us. Go local with adventure. Go local with us. Go local with adventure. Your unofficial cast.